So what's an array and what is it for? Well, many times in programming, you have a whole bunch of incoming data that is very similar in that it's the same type of data. It's a number, an integer, for example, and you want to kind of group those into one place. You don't want a thousand variables floating around. Now, the simple way to do that is to group them into an array. An array is simply a grouping of those variables that are all of one type. So in this case, it's a float 1.23.60.1. The pertinent features of an array is that it has variables stored in each location, starting at location zero and then progressing upwards, zero, one, two. This is called zero-based indexing. All arrays start at element zero. In fact, most things in programming start at element zero. An array can hold any type of thing, but usually only one type can be held across the whole array. So you can also have strings, my name is, for example. Now, where would you use an array? Well, many, many times you're fetching data from a database or a server. Let's say you're displaying a list of songs to the end user so they can tap one and play it. Well, you don't want to send over a thousand songs one by one. You'd rather just send them over in a big lump and then get your app to put them into an array, which will then be put into the list of items that the user can tap. So that's where you would use an array when you have a similar type of thing that you have many of. Now, bonus points, if you're in an interview and you get asked what's an array and what's it for and you run them through this, that's good enough for them. They may ask you some questions about ordered and unordered arrays. Usually, if you hear the word array, it's ordered. So zero is the first element, one, two, and it stays in that order. OK, unless you manually change it yourself and put it into a new array. Lists, same thing. They're usually ordered, although some languages, I believe, have them unordered. You have other things that I'm not going to go into here that, that will unorder the array. So the first element isn't always what you expect. But that's none of our business here. We're just interested in arrays. The pertinent feature of an array that you'll get, you'll get brownie points for in your interview is if you say, well, variables are actually just memory addresses. They're memory locations. And when you call a variable, it goes to the memory, fetches it and returns it. Variables are stored all over the RAM, as you can see, just like that, sort of spread out. They might be bunched together just by random chance or how the operating system works, but that's basically the picture. An array is quite unique in that it does the following. It bunches all of the elements of the array together in memory. Now, I don't know if this is the case across all languages, but I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments as usual. So that is a pertinent feature of an array, and you can bring that up in the interview. I don't know if that helps speed up access, but accessing arrays is fast anyway. So I assume that it does, and that's probably why it's there. All right, those are arrays. Any questions, ask away. If you're a beginner programmer, then you're probably a bit daunted facing a landscape of hundreds of languages and frameworks. What you need, even more than programming knowledge, is clarity around your learning journey. You need a map. A map that shows you what technical and non-technical skills are required as an employee, freelancer, or entrepreneur. And that's where my free guide comes in, Zero Dev to Hero Dev. It outlines top-level skills you need to become an employee, freelancer, entrepreneur, or any mixture of the three. If you want a map to success, then this guide is what you're looking for. Get it for free at imdev.net forward slash hero.